are on record. So, um, I suppose you still wanted me to start with your games, especially the 30-minute yes. uh, ones that you have played. So, just allow me a second to... Uh, Can you share your yeah, screen? Yeah, that, that's exactly what I'm trying to sort out with no more than 2,700 mouse clicks. Okay, so this is the first game that you hopefully see already on the score, uh, score on the screen. Azar versus you. Okay, actually, I will cover out your name. Uh, just why not coconut? Okay, so we are black. Um, Rui Lopez. Okay, knight c3 is definitely an odd move here. So rookie one is theory. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that you were familiar with that. Very sensible chess, good stuff. D4, bishop, excellent. You're playing really well, and already we are winning. That's great stuff. Whoa. Wow. Look at you, man. You are definitely using some time, spending some time on tactics. I'm very proud of you for finding this. We are looking at a 30 30, though, so it was likely that you would pick up on that. The computer wants you to go back to F6, and I want the computer to not to disturb my lesson. Okay, you took, I'm cool with that, you took, I'm cool with that, bishop F6 is the first move that I'm not quite sure if I like, because I would like to, this is awkward, so what I can see is that you're already worried about this, Yeah. which you can solve in a lot of ways that are more productive than bishop f6. My number one go-to would be f5 because I want to gain space in the center. Okay, I can actually see myself easily doing something like pawn up, pawn up and having pawns all across the fifth rank. It's a very depressing view for white to face. Number two, simply put the queen here, offering a mm. queen trade. Or if they refuse it, then you swing into e6, covering h6, and hitting the pawn there. Okay, and at last but not at least, my uh, last favorite is d5. Again, same spirit, conquering the center. And if they chuck the bishop in there, so be it. You play bishop f6, next move king h8 is going to kick it out. Okay, you went right yeah, onto f6. I think it was a little bit clumsier than necessary and now you have to be a tad bit careful with moves like this because now there is a big hole here and he's already covering it so now this has become a bit of a backward pawn and I would like to really have it on c5 not quite sure how I would have gone about it in this particular position it probably doesn't matter because you are way ahead in material good stuff good stuff Good stuff. Okay, let me just have a... Oh, okay, very good. You had this rook d1 uh, trick here. Although, I guess queen b2 wasn't quite necessary. They could have gone to somewhere more sensible like f2, but then again, you would pinch yet another pawn. The only thing I want to check, Oscar, here is whether it was necessary for us to lose a pawn on d4. By yeah, which, I... what I mean is that you, you, you chose to get out of the pin which solved the problem for good, but it solved the problem at the cost of a pawn. Yeah. Whereas pawn c5 would have cemented everything in, in the center, and then you just go queen a5 next. Like from here on, you have got no pressure to worry about whatsoever, and I always like that kind of scenario. And in fact, now you are threatening to push this pawn forward, having the two connected pass pawns, which is always the heaven scenario for you so i think that this was again a little bit like uh, trying to avoid trouble even at the cost of material which was not really necessary having said that the finish was beautiful um okay so he resigned here but waiting for you not even waiting for you to get there yeah yeah resigned right away it is what i wanted to play for many moves earlier uh, yeah, it's actually it... pretty cool that after rook he king here, rook he the rook defends back, otherwise he would get mated here. Yeah. Did, did you see that? I didn't see it from the start. Yeah, okay. I mean, you didn't need to, but it, it, it's it's just one of those things when you go like, oh yeah, luckily it does work because I, I cover back. And yeah. it's, it, it's all fine and dandy. Right, um, very impressive, Oscar. Really, it was. I am very, very happy with how the game went. 
I have to be honest though, and you have to be honest with yourself too about this, your opponent was fairly weak. But then again, yeah. it, it, it's not your fault. You can only beat the dudes who play with you, so good on you, mate. That was a really convincing victory. Well done. Okay, remember this, Oscar, please, that in general, in the D3 Spanish, and in fact, overall in the Spanish, it's very rare that you go to G4 and it's good. In fact, I okay. would say, with the, the slight exaggeration, the only time when Bishop G4 is a good move is if they play D4 here right away without playing H3 first. Because then it's a very sharp line where they now find it difficult to hang on to the pawn on D4, so they have to push it in, and then... Yeah, this line works out to be totally fine uh, for black. But basically, the concept behind not playing bishop g4 is the fact that if you, they kick you out, then you either go back, which then made it absolutely useless and you just lost a move and a tempo, or you maintain the pin, but then you step into this knight g3, which makes it very ugly because, again, the bishop has to move. And when you come back here, this is a very unproductive diagonal for this bishop to be on. You would love to have it either here or even here, but definitely not on g6. And, of course, the worst part of it is that they even get to play this and then plant a knight on f5 because you can't kick it out with pawn g6. Okay, so this is something that you really badly want to avoid. So the correct way to play this, there are a fair few actually. Your ultimate aim is to get d5 in ASAP. So queen c7 is quite good here. Knight g3, rook e8, bishop f8 back and d5. And only then will you decide where you put the c8 bishop. Because you're dominating the center so heavily, you actually get away with that. You can do stuff like h6, knight g3 and then bishop e6 and leave it here which optically looks good, but now it's harder to execute d5 because after e d, these two pieces are pressuring the e5 pawn, which is why I proposed he queen, e, uh, queen c7. Mm. So bishop g4 was somewhat inaccurate, and actually now g3 is good too, because now after h3 you will have to either take or retreat. d5, logical. I would say that this is going the way how logic would suggest it should. You took there. Hmm. Yeah, I don't like this, Oscar. So this is a little bit deceiving because if you look at the position, like at, at this position, at first sight you go like, okay, I have got a better central control, I am better developed, all fine and dandy. The problem is that White has got a lot of latent potential in the position. First of all, he has got at least two obvious moves that will increase, actually three, the quality of his position ridiculously like the the improvement in the position from white's point of view will be huge you don't have such obvious moves you need to guard your knight but after i play g5 and then knight f5 you are already on the back foot and very clearly you can you begin to see that these white squares in the absence of your light squared bishop are very weak and in fact this bishop can easily be the hero of the game down on the diagonal because it it will be totally uncontested. You can never put a bishop in front of it to exchange it. So whilst optically white's position right now it doesn't seem to offer a lot, it has a lot of potential, a lot of momentum in it. And uh, for that reason, I don't like this setup at all. I think that the, your wisest call here would have been to come back and go from here. But sorry, actually, we can't do that because um, if I was hanging Right, so maybe then you had to take and uh, after queen you take perhaps d4 and go from here. It is still playable. If you manage to dodge this bishop on this diagonal, then you may be able to have an okay game. But I would definitely prefer to be white here. So basically, you had the right strategy to go for d5, but you combined it with this very unfortunate bishop g4, which looks like a very active and good move, but in fact, it only caused trouble. Now let's see what happened. So you took here, once again, taking on g4 seems to me to be way obvious, because again, you are taking a far more valuable bishop rather than a knight, and once again, this pawn is actually quite a nuisance. If knight in, bishop here. 
But so part of my thought process is if they were taking the bishop right away, it would be up a pawn. And yeah, it's it's something I, I was willing to try and see how it would play out. Right. I'm not quite sure if I understand how you figure that you're up a pawn here. Because we are that equal. Um, I think it was on uh, on a previous uh, variation. So from the start when I played uh, D takes on if Yeah, so once again, if they take here, take here, take here, this is dead even. In, in every single variation yeah. I have shown you so far, material was in balance. Yeah, I, I remember thinking I was going to be up a pong, I don't know why. Um, yeah, that must have been a, a miscalculation somewhere. And here again, they needed to take here, not on E4. Uh, and even if they were to take on e4, they should have taken with a pawn. Right? Mm. This is the most unfortunate way they could play it. And now, for the first time in this game, this bishop actually does do a good job on this diagonal, because now this pin is indeed becoming a bit of a nuisance. Oh, wow. So I think my opponent was thinking that they could capture on c6 with yeah, a fork. Yeah, 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 they did think that, but... That was a bit of disappointment. Give me a second, please, Oscar. There is uh, someone knocking on the door. I'm really sorry. Just a sec. Sorry, Oscar. You there? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a bad tactical blunder on your opponent's behalf, but um, not much was there to be done anyway, because after Rook Retreat, yeah, you can just build up the position. King is weak. Now your position is actually more active, and yeah, it's all fine. But yeah, <clears throat> the main thing that I want you to take away from this, Oscar, is that in these Rui Lopez structures, it's very rare that this bishop move is good for you because you find that you always get kicked out <coughs> by these moves. Okay. Okay? And again, the rest was rock solid, mate. Really, really good stuff. Okay, so we are white here. Um, okay, D4 is a good move here too, by the way. Perhaps better. And only retreat when they play D6. Hmm. Okay, this opening by your opponent, especially with queen b4, is shocking. Mm. Right. I am thinking, Oscar, my favorite number one candidate move here. Although I, the more I look at it, the more I like what you've done, is bishop g5. I think that's also what the computer likes. Um, what do you do after queen takes on b2? I basically go like this. Yes! I celebrate Oscar because this is exactly what I wanted them to do. I will go up here and I'm going to trap their queen. So, to be honest with you, Oscar, when I proposed bishop g5, I wasn't even looking at this because that's the one that I just know from experience that that's going to go down really quickly, really efficiently. Because now all they do is they force me to play good looking developing moves, and now this queen is seriously in trouble, and I'm also threatening to destroy their king side completely. And look at this. There is no way that with these pieces here, one can afford taking pawns like this that would compromise the queen's position even more. So after here, here, I don't even know what the next move will be, to be honest with you. I, I, I think, I honestly think that it's borderline resignation here. Because this is something that they can't really allow. And on top of that, I have got this tiny little sneaky A3 move, after which this is not going to be stoppable. 
Mm, okay. So this is just game, and really, what did they do? Like uh, this is so awkward. Like, it's quite like a comedy where they can't move a muscle at all, and they they would like to get here, but they can't. It's like what on earth? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you played a three queen there and then bishop there. I find it a little bit passive and clumsy because these are just two blunt threats that I think they should be able to dodge. Although the position is so bad for black with these clogged up pieces that maybe even this one is absolutely deadly. So if b4 then they can... Okay, so I was looking at stuff like bishop g5 even here. Wow. Now a new idea came to my head, Oscar. What about if you play here, bishop b5? With a not so subtle idea of b4 trapping the queen next. Yeah. That would have been quite interesting too. Maybe he has got these tactics. That's quite cute. But, yeah. Yeah, right. okay. So you went bishop d2, fine. Uh, queen there, knight there. This queen is, is getting trapped, that's for sure. Mm. And here, a mistake. Yeah. So bishop e3, yeah? Defending the pawn. And now uh, g3 is going to come with... Yeah. Yeah. Queen is trapped. Basically, the queen will have to go back, and then you can take here, you can go to e6, you can do whatever you please to do. That's very sad, Oscar, because uh, you were about to reap the results of this really well played opening, and then pff, just went out in the window because of one silly blunder. Mm. Yeah, this is carelessness, that's all. You just didn't look around well enough. And remember this, Oscar, and I do keep on saying this to my students all the time. When you are about to deliver the deadly blow, which is why basically you thought that that was the knockout blow, you always look around because that's basically the last chance when they can do something. And if you stuff it up, it's so annoying. So you literally look at every single move before you execute this because if it's correct, you know that it's curtains. So that's when you really, really calculate and make sure that it really is a knockout blow because else we are up for a high quality, high level embarrassment here like that. Mm, yeah. That's very sad. Okay, now I would have liked either to come back here to hunt the bishop or to play bishop f4 so that I can play bishop c4 and be aggressive. I don't like Oscar the fact that we're going backwards where you know that I am a maniac of going forward, forward. The only thing that goes for you in this position is the momentum, that your pieces are all out, ready to play. He has got this. So yeah. yes, it was a massive blow that you blundered that pawn. It really sucks. It's very difficult to bounce back psychologically, but you must. So from here on, the problem is that second best moves won't cut it because you are a pawn down and compensation is vague. So from here on, you absolutely must play the best available moves. And almost always in these cases, it means aggression. So if d6, then bishop c4, and you just keep on pushing them back. And if queen e7, fine, now we will probably have to retreat. So then you start looking at retreating moves like knight here or knight here, whichever applies, I don't know. But the idea is that at least the two bishops, especially the c4 one, are operating and fully functioning. Okay, I think he should have gone to d5, really. Okay. 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 I'm curious, Oscar, what would have happened if you had played here? Uh, I was, I think I was looking at Queen H5. Mm. Well, it's not like I can go to a lot of other places. I think even F5 maybe. Well, Queen F5 looks very, very awkward. Just 
optically speaking, this is looking like we are setting ourselves up for a next queen trap. So what about if I just push you out again? Can go to g6. Now that is exactly what I wanted to show you. This is a stock standard queen trap motif. So that's another one that we need to take away from this game. If you look at Hiro's car, he is very badly struggling with the queen placement. If this queen was on d7, you would be 100% fully dead. But because of this queen is basically stumbling across every single obstacle that you put in front of him, her, you still have a realistic chance uh, to stay in the game. Now, I just realized after five minutes of ranting that actually this is utter nonsense because this is hanging. Oops. Yeah. But that still means that you need to think along the lines of discomforting the queen one way or another. Definitely not h3, because that falls for uh, queen takes. So perhaps an idea would be bishop f4 to cover back, to cut off the fourth rank and create a threat. Let's have a look at how your move fared. Okay, wow. Queen d2, I like it, because now knight h4 again becomes a threat. Knight g4, that hurts down there, but now we've got knight e4 potentially. Now he went back, so knight e4, d5, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, wait a second. So knight e4, d5, knight h4. Ta-da! And the queen is gone again, Oscar. Hmm. We have done it, man. We have done it. We have done it. Because if the queen goes here, knight f6 check wins it. A beautiful yeah. line here is knight takes f2. Which is actually quite fascinating. You can't take the queen because then check and wins the queen. But now after knight takes, bishop takes f2. Instead of taking, which would lose because of queen takes g5, you just go here. Oh, okay. But actually, this line is not over yet. Wow, look at that. Ah, uh, yeah, this is over now. Oh, no. They can take here. Wow, look at these wild complications. This is beautiful chess. So they can take, take. And then queen g4, bishop here, queen here. And now, uh, Oscar, either we trap the queen or it's going to be a perpetual attack. Wow. This is so cool stuff. Here, here. Huh. I can't find the finish of blow, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was one. Yeah, this was uh, hugely entertaining. Yeah, knight e4 would have definitely worth a shot to see how he reacts. So what was it again? Knight here. Knight f2. Now I can't take because of check takes the queen. So I took. Bishop took. Yeah, now I can't take because of there. And if here, then bishop takes here. Queen takes and queen g4. This is totally forcing. This is totally forcing. Bishop here, queen here. And uh, yeah, sadly h3 doesn't trap the queen with subsequent g4. Yeah, that's as good as it gets. Okay, so knight e4 would have been good enough for a draw by the looks of things. Really awesome stuff. I like that move. Yeah, I think my opponent blundered here. Yeah, but... you, you were very lucky that he fell for this. Um, what he should have done here was obviously knight e5, which I think would have caused a fair bit of trouble for you. Yeah, yeah this, and, is not, uh, this is not looking good. Um, but yeah, you got lucky here. But hey, the thing is, you only get lucky, Oscar, if you fight well enough for it. People who yeah. played sad moves all game long never got lucky. Luck in chess very rarely happens without you working for it, and you did. So in my book, you fully deserved what happened. Yeah, that's very good, and, because we didn't identify And soon that. here... Yeah. So here I still have uh, I still had time to think, and I think I played a couple good moves. But then uh, I was starting to uh, get low on time, and I missed like the winning move. Um, it's a couple moves I had. 
Okay, if we want to be fair to you, Oscar, or to fair to the case, you have got three minutes and you are playing with a 10 or 15 second increment, 30 second increment. You should win this position against Magnus Carlsen. Yeah, sadly I'm a bit slow. Because uh, it just plays itself. So, let me give you an example. In this position, this takes no time to play. Rook E7, B4 takes no time to play. And from here on, like, the, the point of this Oscar is that eventually, and rather sooner than later actually, uh, isn't ID4 winning the house, by the way, here? Yeah, that's what I missed. Yeah, what I was going to tell you is that rather than going from move to move, have a vision of what you want to do. And as soon as you play B4, I tell you what my uh, what my vision would be as white here. Which was my vision as well. It just That's I it. didn't manage to to make it work with a, with the time ahead and uh, and ended up making mistakes once I had like okay, now one minute. Or... Let, let's get into this a little bit deeper. In order to do this, you need one minor piece desperately badly, and that's this bishop. It covers the promotion square, it denies the 8, it just is a colossal piece to execute that plan to perfection. Right? So when 94 hits, the only move you don't do is this. Because that just stuffs up the whole thing in a spectacular fashion. Right? So you go like, okay, 94, what's the goal? Oh, this is hanging. Oh, this is hanging too because after takes e3 is hanging. Okay, how about if I put my pieces in the center like I was told to? Now, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, and this is ready to roll all the way. Literally. Yeah. That's and I was it. expecting here that they would play rook to a2, but... Um... Oh, they would play rook a2 here, inevitably. I, I'm all good and up for that. Still, after a4, now you can swing the rook back onto e1 to create a very annoying pin here. Um, it is still going to win on its own accord without too many dramas. Um, you ended up taking, which is by the way not a mistake by any stretch, but again, I find it that you're not, again, consistently following your plan. Your plan was to do this. Yeah. This doesn't fit in there because you're forcing the rock where you don't want it to be. Why don't you go here? And again, up, 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 up. This will be one, two, three moves, at least in a roll scar, where you literally have to think nil. Absolutely nothing. So you will basically get two minutes on the clock for free. That's a birthday gift to you. And the position yeah. is totally winning too, so you, there is no need to worry either. Now things are getting a bit dicey because these pawns are awkwardly hanging. This rook is horrendously misplaced. Yeah, this is uh, where this is not fun anymore, is it? And yeah, you are playing cute moves, but in the end of the day, this fell apart spectacularly. Isn't this hanging? Uh... Like, Hold on, I... What on earth are we looking at here, my friend? I... I don't know, I don't remember this at all. Hmm. Uh, I'm playing the moves that uh, the computer tells me to do. Uh, apparently this did happen. GG. Yeah, I'm very confused right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is very un oscar like to not to do that, so I'm curious what happened there. Um, yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> Okay, so let, let, let's go back here a little bit, Oscar, because it fell apart very quickly, very soon. So number one thing here is that, first of all, we failed to win very easily yeah, we again to the on the super score. basic tactics. In fact, you could execute it in a variety of ways. And only if rook c2, then knight d4, that wins too. It's so humiliating that, in fact, after rook c2, you can even take take and then bishop d3. So there are a zillion ways how this rook, which is very clearly boxed in, can actually be won. Even king f1 wins, like king f1, rook across, knight here. Any possible combination that attacks the rook and then it attacks it again, 
is going to win the game. Instead we play this, which is fine, considering that there is no other win. But then here you needed to centralize the bishop yeah. to cover that, to cover that. C5 is never on the agenda, ready to run. Instead we took. Now, this from here on, you need to be accurate. And accuracy, we showed none. Because here you played king f1, which technically is a good move. I keep on telling you, bring your king to the center. That's where it belongs in the endgame. But right now we are forcing a terribly misplaced rook onto a beautiful square. Instead, after rook a1, you were still ready to rock and roll and uh, try to run away with this game without too many dramas. After rook king here, rook here, or rather rook a2 would have been better, I think the win is, yeah, doubtful. Quite doubtful. Because his rooks are extremely active and yours is extremely passive. And from here on, yeah, it was just uh, a struggle fest. And sadly, apparently, we didn't take a knight here, a rook here. But this game had a lot to offer Oscar too, because in the opening, I would really want you to have that mindset where you just go like, there is no way that I would care about this pawn ever. Ever. Yeah, I was looking at that for a while, but um, I couldn't see the whole um, justification for... Um yeah. For dropping it. I, mean, I know it's poison sometimes, but I, I couldn't see the full line. Always poison, Oscar. Let's go with the always. <laughs> when you see this, that means that yeah, it, it is poisoned as badly as possible. As soon as they touch it, they die. By the way, just one more thing. It uh, just came, occurred to me that you could have played it d5 too. So any move, or in fact, even knight e5, any move, that shut down the fifth rank would have immediately created a, a queen winning trap, which I don't see for the life of me how they can stop. Mm -hmm. So here you should have been very alert to the fact that you don't need to chase this queen, you need to trap it. And more often than not you will find that trapping a piece almost always involves first boxing it in or limiting its moves rather than setting up new and new ways of attacking it like instead of constant attack it's far more common especially with a queen that when you trap a queen you take the squares away before you do the attack because we just constantly keep on harassing it by attacking it but it always has a square to go and it's super frustrating yeah. So, yeah, that, that, that was uh, a fairly big issue here. Likewise, here with bishop e3, again, you first take away the square, then you go in for the kill. A large number of opportunities were present in this game, and sadly, uh, we failed to exploit them. Um, that was that one. This one we have one. Karakan. Very good. Bishop d2 is theory here, Oscar with castles. Um, right. But uh, I will go with it now. OMG. Okay. Have you missed the tactics here, Oscar? Uh, for me to play? Yep. So I was looking a lot at moves like. I don't know if it was in the exact same position, like knight to g6 or the like, um, or knight to f7 here. Okay, what's wrong with them? So let's see, knight to f7, this might be on my analysis after, I think it was... Uh, so knight to f7, then the queen moves. Queen moves. You can't, Oscar, ever calculate. No, sorry, 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 sorry. Like uh, the, the, queen moves. The queen moves. Takes, yeah, the main. Well, king um, takes, bishop takes d6. The game is over. What are we even talking about? Yeah, yeah. I think I think I saw this uh, this after. I don't know why I didn't play it. So the only um, thing that you needed to calculate, your Oscar, was the check. Yeah, but then I uh, saw the c3 maybe. Correct. But yeah. then I don't win the bishop. Yeah, maybe this is what um, what. Now order, prevented. order, 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 my friend, because this is still totally winning for you, for the record. So if they take, you take back. They take now. This is uh, material even, 
and they have got a king yeah. totally stuck in the middle and it's gonna be game over in or oh, actually sorry uh king has to go back there in which case you have a check here if you really want it yeah th this is basically game over Mm -hmm. So that's a no-go for why for black. If they take here, then again you give a check, king revs, you take the bishop. Now you are even a yeah. pawn up, and they are totally dead. So the conclusion is that you just miss the one more win. Yeah, I think you're right. That's what it looks to me, and actually I'm looking at this one as a potential alternative that is quite strong too. Because it actually denies both checks. Queen c7 takes, queen takes knight a5. And if queen check here, then you can block it from here, defending everybody who was hurt. And again, big fat pawn up. So, hmm. And actually, you might even be able to drop back here, now that I'm looking at it, because after takes, takes... If he takes, then queen check. Ah, okay, knight d7. Right, this is not as clear. Now let's go with knight f7 because that's the thematic way to finish this whole business. And happy days. If queen here, bishop here. GG. Queen hanging, rook hanging, game is over. All right, yeah. you castled knight d5. Now the struggle phase begins. Queen f3. Okay, was there anything else, Oscar, you looked at here rather than Queen F3? I, th I think I was looking at uh, Knight to uh, take F7, but I, I just, I don't know, because now it looks a uh, very, uh, very obvious tactic. No, 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 this is now not working anymore. Forget about it. It's check, Knight takes F4, wins for Black 2, no go. This is oh yeah, I think doesn't work maybe this is the first time I started because, looking at it. Yeah, then. you castled right into that check. Uh, into that check. No, now it's actually uh, damage management because yeah. you are hurting here, you are hurting here. What can we do? So in fact, I didn't see the whole continue when I played queen to f3 here I was intending to recapture obviously with a queen but then I didn't see the f6 move yeah to be fair to you Oscar rather to the whole position I hate the look of queen f3 because I just am disgusted by this pin even if this doesn't happen to win which it does it just is an ultimate spot I would never ever want to be in yeah I just thought I at least I had the threat but, uh, um, yes, you do. That's true. But sadly, f6 dodges it rather sufficiently. Yeah. And even if it didn't, castles here would be yeah quite unpleasant. Um, this is already a compromise, Oscar. I want to think in aggressive terms. I want to go forward. This guy just punched you very hard in the face. And my old ultimate go-to in such cases is to try to punch back. Instead, you took the hit. And you so were perhaps it out to follow the analogy. Knight to be four. Bingo, my friend. Center. Chuck your stuff in the center. This is how good chess is played. They attack you. Who cares? You attack them. Bring it on, baby. If they take you on e5 with Ida, you take back with the bishop. So be it. So I was looking at. Um, I think I was looking now. Bishop takes on. Uh, uh, knight takes on. Sorry, we start from black. So yeah. The knight takes on f4, and now I take on d6. Then I was looking at king to e7. Yeah, I don't get it. Aren't we just totally winning here? Yeah. But this is game over. Yeah, That's what because, happens to exactly, uh, Oscar, when you play aggressive chess. People on this level can't deal with moves like this because this is a very unexpected blow not only chess wise that but psychologically too because he's already thinking that oh yeah bishop has to move out in a pawn if he defends it then he's a no court pin so he feels that he has got the initiative he's dictating events and then all of a sudden he realizes that uh -uh, not the case he has to dodge bullets here deadly ones and by chucking the knight in the center, if, if worse comes to worst, you can always just drop back with the bishop, maintaining this beautiful outpost. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, after bishop c7, you can't find anything better for the life of you than just dropping back, well, then so be it. It's 
far as I'm concerned, it's looking quite fine. Yep. Yeah. So th this is uh, this is quite uh, quite manageable stuff as as far as I can see. So yeah, I would have loved to play ninety four there. Um, yeah, this was really sad. Okay, I'm glad that you still found this because at least we are sort of trying to fight. Okay, now what you did here, I dislike again because um, do I dislike it? So the alternative was no. Sorry, no, no, no. I do not dislike it. I do like it. I only have a question to you. And I don't think that this question is actually valid. I was looking at whether this move could potentially work or not, but I don't think it does. I spend more than half of my time looking at that move, and I think you have some compensation. We might even win, but I. But then I thought. Your assessment was fully correct, Oscar, and you did the right thing by doing this. That was perfect. Okay, so slightly better end game, probably not winnable. Um, I don't really like g4 here, and I tell you why not, because I can see that my opponent has one plan, one crystal clear plan, and that's e5. And yeah. all g4 does is that it creates an unnecessary weakness. A very typical mistake of club level players, by the way, is that they tend to play a lot of impulsive poor moves in endgame scenarios without any apparent goal. Like I'm sure that you so had a reason why you played this, but the reality is that it doesn't have any point to it other than defending this pawn, which didn't need to be defended. So I'll be honest, I didn't like playing before, and after playing, I was like, well, that's probably, it looks really ugly. I knew that if I was what I would have played as black, I just didn't know what else to play. Okay, I was so looking at night. Were you aware of the fact that e5 was coming? Yes. Okay, well, why don't we try to stop it then? Yeah, I just, well, it wasn't clear to me how. Well, you have got two candidate moves to do that, these two. And, yeah, uh, and I was looking at knight to d6. I, I so. would prefer this because it has a larger influence on the center and it not only stops e5, but it stops c5 too. So isn't it objective achieved? Um, let's see. I mean, of course, e5 is possible, but now it means that they are creating an isolated pawn. That's okay. like, bring me a bottle of champagne. You couldn't possibly ask for more from this position than forcing your opponent to have an isolated pawn. In fact, now they wouldn't play e5, but if they don't, then you have achieved your short-term goal, which was to halt their counterplay. Because structurally, you stand better. The reason why e5 was annoying was because it broke the structure. This weak pawn has stopped being weak. And in fact was traded off for a central pawn here. Now I would be worried about rook c8 followed by c5. And when I say worried, what I mean by that is that that's the very one move that prevents us from my winning dreams. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, quite likely, as I said, I would be surprised if this position was winnable. But unless we try to do the best, it's going to fizzle out into a drawish scenario rather quickly, uh, if not worse. So I still had a plan with all of these combinations. Yeah. Um, and I think it played on my favor, but it wasn't forced. Right, okay. For example, here 95 is a move that I'm looking at that would uh, guarantee at least an easy equality for black. Because if knight takes, rook takes, you go check, I block it. And you even have to be careful with entering the pawn ending because my king is closer to the center. So I wouldn't be surprised if that was actually an immediate win or very close to that for black. It's about what. I think that's very close to what happened, actually. So you have to be careful here, is what I'm trying to say. Anywho, let's go. Oh, okay, this is word by word. Oh, wow, this is the game. 
Okay. Um, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Because I think that F5 here uh, looks like a very powerful move. And if F3, then I may be able to come in here. Yeah. Mm. This is... Uh, I, I don't think, Oscar, this is just looking really bad. Yeah, this is a loss. So, yeah, we went straight into an endgame that wasn't looking any good. Okay. Wow. The wild things. I wasn't really sure yet. I saw he could promote first and then give a check. Uh, it's, it's what I could try in that position. I don't think I could have turned back and went to the queen side. Okay, Oscar. What I'm not quite sure about here is, and let's be honest with ourselves, we have got a ton of time on your clock, yes? Yeah. Okay, look at the pawn structure. Yeah? Look at the king. So here is what you need to look at. First of all, your king is better placed than theirs, yeah? Yeah. So that's already, we are ahead by one point if we give points to these qualitative differences. Number two, how many spare pawn moves do you have? You have one, two, three, four. They have got yeah. one. So all this tells you that you should keep this position at bay, keep it normal, because if everything plays out as it should, due to the incredible amount of pass moves you have and they don't, every scenario where we are in opposition will be won by you. So, to translate it into chess language, what on earth would they do after this? Because if they go yeah, there, you go in. If they go check, you go here, they go here, and ta-da, you play f4. Not because of that randomly the move I chose, but because, actually, yeah, f4, because I wanted to cut out this. Yeah. And that's it, it's game. He has to let you in, either here or here. Game over. So I don't care if this you promote first, because it's already a very messy scenario where I promote, they promote. Uh uh, I don't want anything like that. I promote and they don't. Thank you very much. That's all I'm doing. And again, they go back, they let you in here, you go back, pass move, done, dusted. They can't live with this. Yeah. And that's game over. So we actually missed out on a super easy win here. Now this also should be a super easy win because you have got two connected pass pawns. Okay, that's a bit random. Um, there was a. I think I had some reason for it. Because, okay, now I want to snatch the pawn just because uh, it could create trouble. Yeah, okay. Well, look, it was a good thing that you traded off those pawns. I think, um, yeah, I think you just played it so that it's productive because it was under attack. And after King there, um, you just went for another check in order to get this pawn. Yeah. Which is very, very commonplace. Uh, yeah, all good, all good. In the end, it turned out to be fine for you, Oscar, but uh, winning a pawn ending is always the easiest possible thing you can do because it's a simple calculation. So make sure that you don't fall short in that department next time. All right, let's have a look at this. Hmm, this is not good. Now I know it. <laughs> Okay, so this is uh, how you cannot possibly play chess. Okay, so... It's because you... I, missed, uh, yeah. I missed after my takes on e5, uh, e4, on and rook to e1, I missed uh, the e5. That's Oscar, the most basic motif here. You must know this, like gospel. 
because almost every single opening trick in this uh, Giacomo piano setup is based on this. Now I know it. Okay, so there Probably. is an, uh, an even more common one, which goes like uh, knight f6, d4, e, d, castles, knight e4, rook e1, d5, bishop takes, queen takes, and then knight c3. Which is a pretty cute move to exploit the double pin, but even this variation is actually just a slightly better version for actually it's slightly better for black as far as I'm concerned uh, but anyhow so it's always d5 always 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 d5 um, and basically the reason why white is not winning on the spot with c takes here is because you have this check so that you get to yeah. trade these off and then you can sneak this in and you punch in the center just on time. Now he's about to take that opportunity away from you by castling. So in that regard, castles is an amazingly good move because after CD4 you don't have a check. Your castles is a horrendous move because it doesn't do anything to improve the position and after CD4, now you are the one holding the baby. And that's it. In fact, I, I knew I was lost here already. Um, now that I one is, I don't know. But I mean, it is just, yeah, I, I don't really want to even advise you as to what you may have, could have, should have done, because it doesn't matter. Uh, it looks horrid. But I, I'm very surprised, because this player was uh, a lot higher rated, and the castle move is it's not the main line. No, uh, no, fact, no. It, it is it just it. a cheeky move that hopes for you to to um, avoid this business here with castles. So I mean, uh, basically, what he tried to you uh, tried to do was to catch you out of theory. Yeah, which was good because now I've learned uh, I learned something, so I'm actually yeah, quite pleased. That, that's right. That's it. So let's forget about this game, Oscar. Motif learned. Move on. Another sweet victory. G3. This is certainly not something that I showed you. But it's something I've um, I've learned, so it wasn't random. Well, that something just because it's not uh, something I showed you, it could perfectly be well. Uh, it's just something that I don't tend to teach to my students. So, oh wow. Okay. Well, this is not a game we are going to look at. Yeah, too sad. Your opponent just gave you a piece for free. Your opponent just gave you a pawn for free. Okay. Hmm. All right. Is there a reason why we don't try to keep this Oscar? Because mm. like Bishop E3 to me this looks like a no-brainer. Why would I let them take it back? It's mine. I've. I fought for it, I deserve it. Give it to me. Yeah, I, I don't yeah, have a problem with This is, this is too obedient. Uh, and I'm not quite sure. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'll go with it. Yeah, bishop e6 looks to me like a decent developing move here to hope for some yeah. counterplay. I was thinking we would play that, in fact. Yeah, f f5, holy moly. Holy moly, guacamole. Alright, now g3. Okay, why not bishop f6? This is a very. In fact, I was thinking we would play that. Um, very weird. Very weird game altogether. All right. Okay. Um, I'm guessing. Yeah, this was tricky, actually. Yeah. Oh, okay. This check is actually no good because of bishop e6. Right. So check there b4. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. So I, I misplayed this, uh, but I've only got away because they didn't. Like I, I could have played it better. I tend to agree I didn't with have that, to that play it doesn't look sound. Before. Yeah, I would have started with a check for starters. Yeah, but then 
I think it would have been better to keep that square free for the queen to give a check, so you can remove a double attack on the knight. When it, depend, the, it depends like, on how they react, because if they don't do what they wanted to do, or, I mean, if they don't play bishop e6, I wouldn't take this. I would just continue developing. Okay. Because um, now I took away yeah. the bishop e6 square from the rogue. d7 looks ugly as sin. In fact, it loses by force, so they can't connect the rocks. And if they have to take, happy days. Happy days. Because now, I'm just going to go down there and checkmate you. Yeah. That's it. That's it. So I'm not necessarily focused, Oscar, on the pawn on f5. I'm focused on the fact that he's not developed and it has created weakness. So instead of trying to be materialistic, I'm trying to be aggressive and exploit like that was improving the quality of my pieces, improving the quality of my pieces. Instead of that, you went into this very, very double-edged uh, fist fight where pff, Lord knows what's going on. And I don't think that this is uh, quite sound, to be honest. Like even worst case scenario, they take you here, take back on C5, they recover one pawn, this is very weak. Mm. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sold with this on this one. And then he just fell for this. Wow. How sad is that? Fours mate in fact. Unless they sack the queen. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't like this Oscar here. Yeah, I, I should if you have... look at just bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes, yeah, granted you are a pawn up. I don't know, man, if you can win this. It's very iffy. Very iffy. But, all up, Oscar, I, all I can see is massive improvement in your play. Massive. Massive. A lot of silly mistakes and misplaced pieces and planless play are basically of a thing from the past and uh, most of your games showed crystal clear planning strategy reasonably good tactical alertness i'm very happy i'm very happy i mean granted there are the old games like the one that you lost in the giaco piano where we went down yeah. without any resistance whatsoever but the general picture is that it seems to be falling into place the, 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 the one thing that I'm still missing, Oscar, is that very energetic, very aggressive type of play. Remember the move that you missed in the Karokan game, 94, jumping in the center, is yeah. an example of that. So that you still need to improve in that department of trying to avoid playing responsive chess and try to play instead energetic, very aggressive, very brutal, to the point type of chess. But other than that... I couldn't be happier as your coach. So yeah, well done. Yeah, I'm also I'm also happy with improvement. So look, you asked me before the lesson about what I think you should do and yeah, what's going on. I don't know what you are doing, but keep on doing that because very okay. clearly it works. Yeah, I basically I try to do as many easy tactics as possible, uh, and when I have more time, more calculation. But yeah and play some uh, annotated games once a day if I can. Yeah, very good, very good. And if you can, Oscar, try to aim for playing over the board chess as best as you can, because that's where the real thing happens. Yeah, uh, I have people I can play with at work, but we only play Blitz. Um, yeah, so what no, I'm doing... I mean proper competitions or club games. And I know but that that is games. very, very time consuming. Yeah. Yeah. On the uh, on the long games, I play on a board. I just re rely on the move on the on the screen. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Alrighty, Oscar. Thank you very much. I sadly have to go now. Um, I'm very very happy. Keep up the good work. Um, I think next time round again we are going to spend a bit of time on your openings so that uh, okay. we can perfect all angles and then uh, go from there. How does that sound? Okay. okay. Alrighty. Yes, so good. click me a message whenever you need me and uh, keep up the good work. Good on you. Well done. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. See you, mate. Bye. Bye.